Okay guys, this is now uh, mining on immersion cooling. You can see 150 terahertz S19K Pro miner. So I'll just show you the setup, how it's been set up. You know, the installation is quite easy. So this is the one of the immersion tanks we have. It's a fog hashing uh, C6 tank. You can see it, it does have temper temperature sensors. And so the, the oil is 56 Celsius. The same same temperature exactly will be uh, on the chip. So 56 is very cool. As you know that the liquid is much, transfers heat much more better than air. And uh, these miners can be overclocked. These miners, by the way, are overclocked to 4,400 uh, 4, watts. You can see all of the mining here, um, the immersion liquid going around uh, through the fans. Uh, so the, to install, it's very simple. First things what you need to do is connect the exhaust pipe, which is coming from the pump. You can see this is this one, the left one. Um, to the top one into the dry cooler. To, so the, it goes to the bottom, exhaust goes to the bottom, then it goes to the dry cooler and comes back through this pipe and comes back into the immersion cooling box and cools all the mining rigs. Uh, the liquid coming down from the bottom, you can see the pipe, uh, this one here goes in the bottom and coming out here and going around the circle again. So yeah, the setup is quite easy. Um, connect the pipes, fill out the tank with the liquid, and you're all done. We have here also the uh, C2 tank. This is for two miners. And also the uh, C1 tank, which is for one. All of them are S19K Pros. We are doing this because we want the miners to overclock to maximum to get a better cooling and you know reduce the noise. So we have deployed this unit immersion cooling tank C6, C1 and C2 last week and they are working just perfect. Uh, we have overclocked the miners to S19K Pros to 4400 watts. So I just want to go through some pros and cons on using such immersion cooling tank for your mining operation. The probably the biggest pros are that the cooling, of course, some of the, you know, climate, depending where are you, depending on your ambient temperature, sometimes you cannot, you know, afford to overclock miners. Sometimes you need to underclock the miners to actually uh, get the miners working. As the air cooling is not as efficient as the liquid cooling, you know, it's pure physics because the liquid transfers heat more easily than actually air. So the first one is, better cooling of course and the second one is noise reduction because you know a lot of these miners are you know all the AC miners as they use a lot of power they should have high extraction funds to cool down the miners uh, because they use a lot of power and for some people the high noise on the miners is not acceptable so this is another case where you can use the immersion cooling tanks, which reduces the noise significantly. Also, depending on your ambient temperature, because the immersion liquid, you know, on most of the cases, depending on the situ situation, with a single loop, the immersion oil is cooled down with the fan, so it goes through the radiator and comes back into the immersion tank, which cools down the oil, and that circle goes around. So depending on oil temperature, the fans could also work on the max performance, but they are not as near enough noise level as the actual fans on the AC miners. Roughly estimate about 60 decibels, where on AC miners it's 80 decibels on the fans. Another thing is its effort as a deployment, like to set up these immersion tanks, uh, took us about only about 10 minutes per tank just to fill out the oil into the tank, you know, dip in the, the miners. Of course, there's a little bit more work on the miners because you have to remove the fans from the power supply and also from the miner itself because you don't need the fans in the immersion tank. And, you know, that takes a little, little bit of time. Uh, but otherwise, to deploy the immersion tank itself, it's quite fast. Of course, if, there's no, if you don't run in any issues, like we had on a C1 tank, actually there was a faulty product. There was a small hole into the... Um, immersion tank where's the motor, you know, the oil was dripping down 
the compartment and then down on the floor. So we flooded a little bit the floors. So some of the cons on buying such an immersion or deploying such an immersion tanks is that it's an additional cost for your mining farm because you, you, you want you know, your ROI as fast as possible. And you know, this adds some extra cost for your miner for roughly for, um, roughly for six miners with this uh, fog hashing. Uh, you would say about around 4,000 euros somewhere because you need the tank, um, you need the dry cooler and you need also the liquid um, to cool down the immersion oil, which is also quite expensive. You need about 200 liters, liters immersion oil. Then another con is that maintenance complexity. You know, if there is anything wrong with the miner, so you have to take it out from the oil and then do its service. Um, also, you have to monitor the oil for any dirt. You know, you have to monitor the temperature. Uh, so there's a little, little bit different. You know, it's a little bit more complicated than on a air-cooled miners. Heat extraction is another big thing because it will add up cost to your energy use. Um, the, you, so you'll be running a fan um, to dry cooler to extract the heat from the oil and also the pump, which on this uh, C6 unit uses about, about 1000 watts for the pump and 1000 watts for the uh, dry cooler. But also you'll be saving a little bit because you won't be running uh, the fans on the AC miner, so you reduce about four fans uh, per miner, so that's about 100, 150 watts you save from the miner. Another thing is uh, space requirements, like and to move this tank, you know, it's because it's quite heavy. It's, the tank on its own, it's about 100 kilos plus the immersion oil, so you have to place it where you want. Then you have to think about where you're gonna put the um, dry cooler. Is it inside the building, outside the building? So, um, you know, the space is a little bit more, you have to take a little bit more space than on the air-cooled miners. Overall, the fog hashing um, immersion cool units seems a great choice. Probably the cheapest in the market, what you can get. The, there is another, you know, quite good and reliable source is the DTX immersion coolings. They have been, you know, distributing these immersion cooling systems for a while now. They have a dual loop where fog hashing only has single loop. Dual loop means basically that uh, there is a heat extraction changer which transfers the heat from the um, immersion oil to water. In that way, you can get rid of the dry cooler and correct, connect the immersion cooling system to your, even to your home heating. We know, uh, we got some information from the manufacturer that they have a clients which heat up the school with AC miners or heat up the uh, hotel with AC miners. So basically, it takes the heat from the miners, from the immersion oil, transfers to the water, and then to the heating system in your location. Immersion cooling is great addition or you know, change for your mining farm if it suits your needs. Always the air cooling will be the cheapest way to, to cool down your miners. The same way as uh, hydro miners, you know, there's additional cost to hydro miners. You need to cool down the water, you need the radiator or you need a cooling tank, you need a water filtration system, you know, and so on. So there is additional cost. But for some people, different cases are more useful than others. They want to get rid of the noise. Um, they want to overclock the miners. Like in my case, I got a very good deal for the power. So I, was, I wanted to overclock the miners to maximum performance. In that way, I can return the investment faster. And I do believe that also the fog hashing immersion cooling tank will pay back for me much faster. So guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. Uh, subscribe to the channel as on the next video we're gonna have a review on the what's that super super scalar k10 it's the fpga miner which which mines a lot of shit coins but we will be testing out the setup how to set it up is it easy to operate because we got some information it's quite hard to operate uh, you need to reinstall the firmware every time uh, you want to switch the uh, to new algorithm because you know fpgas work on a bit streams otherwise guys i hope this video was helpful and of course, like always, mine hardcore or don't mine at all.